most regions in the world, banking is commodity. As an example, in Turkey, average adult holds 1.5 banking relationships. In Estonia, it's two banking relationships. In Singapore, it's even 2.3 banking relationships. Means that each single adult has at least two bank accounts. So it's a fair statement to say you are stand out in those regions if you don't have a bank account. While for us, it's completely opposite. Please raise your hand if you have a bank account. Thank you. In the rest of the world, Iraq is considered as unbanked country or cash society because based on the studies, only 20% of the adults, which is only one out of five of the adults, have their own bank account. So we stand out if we have a bank account, or even more, if we have a credit card. No bank account means that we are completely relying on the, on the cash. So cash is the king. And having strong dependency on the cash is, could be one of the most major issues with our economic crisis. Why is that? Because we need cash to buy food and water. We need cash to fuel our cars to get to work. We need cash to pay our electricity bills. You get my point? We cannot survive without cash. At the same time, there's always shortage for total available cash in the market due to the high demand on it. Based on some informal studies, 25% of total printed Iraqi dinars are circulating in the market. Well, what's happening with the other 75? I think you already know it. It's kept as a cash saving somewhere safe in our houses. But this is a limitation to the market growth. Let's take another example. The majority of our people are depending on the salary. And when the salary gets delayed, market get affected as well. We all hear from our friends and relatives who have some businesses, the famous sentence, market is weak this month and I didn't achieve my target. Because it's all about less cash circulation in the market. In some countries, it's even called circle of the devil because of its strong interdependencies. And eventually, it will have a dramatic impact on the market and on general economic situation as well. If there is a way to easily circulate all the funds or inject more money into the market, that could be a game changer. Banking sector, or more specifically, digital banking could be that game changer, but only if it's done on the right way. Well, what are the reasons for us to not open a bank account? Well, I was summarized in four reasons. The first reason is way too much of bureaucracy. You have to visit the bank, you have to be physically there, finalize all the paperwork, you have to show multiple different documents till finalize the, the account opening, or proving that an existing account belongs to you, or waiting for the bank confirmation. In some cases, banks need to confirm either you are allowed or not, to open a bank account with them. The second reason is limited availability, including access to cash. Well, once you arrive to the bank, you have to wait in the queue. And this queue could take hours till it comes to your turn. And worse than that, what if it's a public holiday and you are in need for some urgent banking services? Another reason is lack of trust. Well, this has an historical point of view. Due to the crisis that already happened to the country in the past, where the demand on cash has always increased and it reached to a level that affected the banks as well. Let's take an example. When a crisis happens to a country and people of that country have to migrate to other country, they always take their cash savings with them. And that's why people are always thinking to keep their cash savings with them. But guess what? When such crisis happens, your local currency doesn't worth anything in the other countries. But what if you have all your savings under your digital banking account directly in your smartphone, where you can convert your local currency to any other currencies and get benefit from it anywhere else? Another reason for us to not open a bank account is 
limited use cases where people actually get benefits from, from the banks. What if you are trying to get some funds from social media? What if you are trying to spend some money on social media? What if you are trying to buy some items on e-commerce apps or websites? Those problems are all related to what I refer as old and outdated traditional banking services. It's really difficult to change, and it will take so much time. But I strongly believe there is no place for traditional banking in the future. But the good thing is, we don't need to change the past. Because the world is changing, and everything goes digital, so is banking. Well, let me ask you some questions. How many of you have a smartphone? Almost all of you. How many of you have an account on social media like Facebook, Instagram, the others? Almost all of you. How many of you would like to order stuff on Amazon or other platforms and get it delivered next day to, to your doorstep? Almost all of you. How many of you have already ordered items on Amazon here? Okay, only a few of you. Exactly. Do you know why? Because Amazon doesn't take cash as a payment method. And that could be one of the reasons that they don't operate here. Let's all together put a vision to leverage technological enhancement and existing user behavior. When I say existing user behavior, I mean everyone from our age, almost everyone from our age knows how to use smartphone, right? So by leveraging technological enhancement and existing user behavior, bridging the gap to the Western world when it comes to the banking. Why I cannot open a bank account directly from home? Why I cannot pay my bills directly from my smartphone? Why I need to find complicated ways to pay to online shops? Why I cannot send money to a friend just like I send him a text message? Well, all of these are possible in the world of digital banking. In certain countries in the world, even digital banking is commodity. Means that it's nothing special anymore. As an example, let's take Norway. The banking penetration for adults shows 100%. Means that every single adult has at least one bank account. And out of those, almost 78% of them are using online banking or digital banking. While digital banking penetration for Iraq for adults shows that less than 2%. Because the banks who are offering online banking or digital banking are offering only limited service functionalities, which doesn't address our needs. So if Iraq is willing to survive in the next few decades and bridge the gap to the Western world, digital banking could be one of the important keys to achieve that. So you all Iraqi citizens, it's time to move a step forward towards to the digital banking before it gets too late. Fortunately, Central Bank of Iraq is also encouraging digital banking. They have issued new regulations on 7th February 2021 to encourage and support digital banking because the future of bank is digital. Let's all together put a mission to say, let's fintech the unbanked and put a claim to say why I need to carry a change when I can have a bank in my pocket. I would like to end my little speech here with an ask, please give a trust to the banks who provide digital platforms. At the end, banking service is a trust regardless it's done online or offline. Thank you.